saved. Saved. As in once saved, always saved. Untrue. Untrue. You know, if you ever met Brendan, he would tell you that he was uh, maybe an accident looking for a place to happen. It seems that if he had two paths, he'd always pick the wrong one. If you ask Brendan, man, what, 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 just what, what happened? He said, man, it, it began early. He said, look, it, it was in, it's in the 1950s. He said, it was me and my mom and dad. My dad is a carpenter. My mom's a nurse. And he said, they, they're struggling. They're, they're, they're not on the same page. He said, they're not in the same book. They're not even in the same library. He said, as a result of it, my mom takes me. So we leave Ireland and go to England. He says, do you know what it's like being an Irish person in England? He said, man, it's just tumultuous. He said, man, all through grammar school and high school, he said, man, I just, I couldn't make the right decisions. It was just a free-for-all. And as a result of it, his stepdad says, man, I got to give him some hope, some direction. So he says, look, I'm going to take you to see a movie. He takes him to see James Bond. He said, man, it was life-changing. He said, man, I just, the guy seemed to have it all together. Go figure, right? And as a result of it, he said, man, I just, I figured that's what I wanted to do. Now, his grandfather knew, he said, the last thing I wanted for him was to be, quote, an actor, end quote. I'm just trying to give him hope. But man, he said it was, it became directional. He said so much so that he decided after high school, man, he's going to go work for a station. He's going to, you know, move in company. He's going to work for a production company. He'd move this, carry this, tote this. And then he said, man, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm getting little bitty bits and pieces. And he, he said, I got a... Um, uh, a, a little bit part in a movie called A Long Good Friday. And then he got in another movie that had a little bit to do with the devil himself. And to be honest with you, he said, man, I'm just struggling. And he said, the saving grace, Brendan will tell you later in life, are two things. The first thing that was meant a lot to him was finding, meeting his wife, who was of all people a Bond, James Bond girl. And she gets him a bit part in a movie called Seraphim Falls. And if you haven't read it, watched it, y'all, it, it's pretty profound with Liam Neeslin. As a result of it, he's in Seraphim Falls, and then he gets in another one um, that's called the Thomas Crown Affair. And then all of a sudden, man, he gets in another one called Heat. And then, man, he gets in another one, and it's, um, doesn't matter, I can't remember the name anyway. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> he's, he gets in a movie that it, it struggles. Let's just be honest. It doesn't make it. Oh, I know what it is. Mamma Mia. Oh, you kidding me? You watched Mamma Mia and you didn't watch Sarah Bond? Okay, now I know the crowd. Got, okay, <laughs> I got you now. Okay. It was painful to watch that movie, as I can tell you. And then all of a sudden, man, the world starts to change. And it changes when he does the Thomas Crown Affair because it puts him in the limelight. Then he gets a little bit part in Mrs. Doubtfire. And then he becomes James Bond. And then he becomes James Bond. Golden Eye. Do y'all know who Pierce Brosnan is and brothers and sisters in Christ? Great. For the six people who now know what planet I'm on, God bless you. But you know what's amazing is the interview that he did not long ago. He said, what was your saving grace? He said, well, one, marrying my wife. But the second thing was the Catholic Church. He said, that's what turned the table. He said, because now I understood the faith. My brother and sister in Christ that's exactly the point. That is the gospel. The good Lord is talking to very Jewish people, Pharisees and Sadducees, and they're asking the question. Remember this. This is his words, not mine. How many people will be saved? Quote, very few. Because they will not be strong enough to make it through the narrow gate. My brother Christ, now you need to stop. You're a first century Jew. You need to understand where they sit in the world. As I told you earlier, most Jews believe only the Jews were saved. You and I know at the end of the day, you and I were on the out, so therefore we wouldn't make it. They even believe some of Noah people would be saved. They believe some of the people during the time of um, um, when uh, Abraham takes them and, and, and Moses, excuse me, Moses leads them into the desert. They, now they're starting to realize that's not necessarily true. And matter of fact, my brothers in Christ, he makes a point to use the word narrow. And then he makes another point to say that it, very few. In other words, faith without works is dead. Because you have faith, you will do good works. And because you do good works, you will have faith. It is God's grace 
God's grace, faith, hope, and love that leads you to where you need to go, but you have free will. Now, my brother in Christ, now let's stop. Hold on a second. You need to make sure you understand this. Throughout Scripture and mankind, the argument about who is saved and who is not, I'll give you a point. How many of you today have heard from others and they'll quote you Romans 10 somewhere up in there. Sometimes they'll quote you Titus. Sometimes they'll quote you Ephesians or Acts, but mostly Romans 10. They will come and say that if you proclaim Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior from your mouth and you believe he rose from the dead, you are saved. Okay, so me and this one lady right here are the only two. Well, we got two. Do I got three? Okay, you got three. We got four. Look, this ain't an auction. Listen to me, brother Christ. At the end of the day, the problem is you need to understand the language in which they speak. Past tense, present tense, and future tense. What I quoted you is present tense. The Greek word is sozo, S-O-Z-O. And every time he talked about being saved in the future, he said you must persevere to the end, which is like around Mark 13, Matthew 10. Every other time, Ephesians, Acts, Romans, Titus, all of them are either past tense or present tense. I'll give you a proof of example. Judas walked with him, proclaimed him to be the savior of the world, even held the man's money. And at the end of the day, the good Lord says three things about Judas. The son of perdition, Satan entered you, and it had been better you never been born. Well, if you're going to make it to heaven because we're all saved, then why would Christ say it had been better you never been born? Because ultimately you're going to make it to heaven. If I, I tell you what, you took a test this week, and you walked in, and I told you, man, it had been better you never took that test. You think you passed. My brother and sister in Christ, how, I tell you what, I need to know, how many funerals have you ever been to in your entire life where the reverend and our priest stood up and said, I don't think Junior made it. He, he didn't make it. He just didn't. <laughs> I've yet to go in one where somebody said that. My brother and sister in Christ, unfortunately my nature sometimes is, is when I go to a hospital, sometimes I don't, I'm not matching the door in the room to the right number. I just, whoop, door, whoop, walk right in. Sometimes it doesn't lead to good consequences. I go to a funeral to say, my prayers for a friend of mine who passed. I went, I, I just went left. I don't know, I just went left. I walk in, I'm in my dress, everybody's watching, and man, I hear the reverend, and he is expounding. This guy did this, and he did that, and he did this, and, and, and I'm thinking, my God, I'm in the wrong room. There is no way, that's my buddy, but I can't get up and leave now. Because the first thing they're going to say is, yeah, look at that Catholic. Look at the guy in the dress. Yeah, look at that piece of work. He didn't even stay to pray. Well, the fact of the matter is, it was my friend. And I knew, I said, man, there is no way. I've been knowing him my whole life. And if you think Pierce Brosnan had a bad upbringing, you should have said, oh, my gosh. And I remember saying, man, we need to pray for this guy. My brothers and sisters in Christ, throughout Scripture, people are always falling victim to once saved, always saved. Why would he tell you in Revelations, which is the last book, by the way, that you will stand before me and I will judge you everything you did with your body, both good and evil? Well, why would you be judging us if they were all going to make it anyway? More importantly, why did you name us? Because in the Garden of Eden, we weren't named. It was man and woman. They didn't get their names till after they were kicked out. And now we're accountable for our actions. My brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a difference between redemption and salvation. Redemption is the crucifixion. Salvation is the pearly gates. Just because that man died on the cross for us doesn't mean you and I get a free pass. My brothers and sisters in Christ, ask yourself this one question. If he is going to come back to judge us, and I'll use the words of St. Faustina, when she asked him, why do you have purgatory? His response, my mercy doesn't want it, but justice demands it. I can't be all loving and caring and not discipline you. Isaiah, the Hebrews, the good Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is why you and I have what we have. This is why the church is set up the way that it is. Do you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and just in case you get confused, I want to make sure you don't, the good Lord was a farmer. He said, I go and I throw seed out. 
And he says, I have four types of seed. I throw some on the path, but it gets trampled by people. I throw some in the rocks, but unfortunately the heat, it just, it just parches it. It doesn't make it. Some of the seed falls into thorns. Well, that gets choked off. Only one out of four falls on good ground. One out of four. My brother in Christ, only 20% of the Catholics believe the Eucharist is true. If I were to ask you, and please don't respond, I don't want to be depressed. Do you know all the commandments by heart? In order, or the order that he wrote them? For he wrote them in order for a reason. That the first three deal with our relationship with him. There's only one commandment that's contingent. It's the fourth one. Do you even know the fourth one? Honor your mother and father and you'll live a long life in the land that I've given you. Dishonor them and your life will be tumultuous. That's the whole commandment. Do you know it's murder, adultery, steal, bear false witness, covet your neighbor's goods and spouse or the back five, back six? My brother and sister in Christ, remember what John said in the gospel. If you say you love Jesus Christ and you know his commandments, then well done. If you say you love him and you do not know his commandments, you are a liar. His words, not mine. You think you learn the commandments after you get in? No way, no how. My brother and sister in Christ, once saved, always saved, is a lie. Why else would he come? Do you know the number of people that were saved in the time of Noah? Eight. Of the million people that followed Moses into the desert, how many people of those million people made it to the promised land? But yet we all walk around as if we're the only ones being saved and everybody else is an outcast. In the way the world spins today, can I beg you to make sure that you go to mass and stop mailing it in? Well, I saw you on television. Well, kudos and thank you for that. Did you bother going? Christ shows up incarnationally. He shows up everywhere in person. I go get baptized in person. He goes to a wedding in person. He anoints the sick in person. He shows up at the Last Supper in person. He gets crucified in person. It means you and I got to show up in person. You can't mail it in. My brother in Christ, you need to understand this. Yes, God is omnipresent. He's in the woods. He's in the fields. He's here and there. But he's only physically present in that tabernacle. This is why you and I have to show up. And we must be in front of him to receive him so that he is in I and you and in us and we are in him. My brothers in Christ, I'm telling you, it's more important today in the world that we live. We are arguing about things that we should have walked away from years ago. We can't even solve the issue of abortion, but yet I thought our court responded to that. We're still in killing people like there's no tomorrow. We got wars about to embark on wars. We've got people that have got their fingers on bombs that should never have it. We got our church that has given off even less light each and every day. I'm telling you this because you know the truth. And you know in your heart of hearts that you and I need to worship him and we need to receive him. You need to go to confession and throw up and be done with it and walk away. You and I need to make sure you go to adoration. If you spend more time on your phone than you do coming to visit Christ at the church or at adoration, can I tell you that's disordered? You spend more time on your phone than you do talking to him, reading scripture, going to adoration, coming to mass, receiving the sacraments. I tell you what, add up your minutes. AT&T does. <laughs> My brother and sister in Christ, if you spend more time on that, I'm telling you, you're not going to be saved. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you where I'm just discerning the act. I'm trying to tell you that once saved, always saved is untruthful and it is a lie. It is directly proportional to you. And my friends in Christ, I will leave you with Mother Teresa's quote, which I still believe today is one of the greatest prayers we ever had. The thing was called, or the poem was called anyway. People are unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. You need to forgive them anyway. If you are honest, people will cheat you. You be honest anyway. If you are successful, you'll win false friends and true enemies. You succeed anyway. If you are happy, they will be jealous. You be happy anyway. If you build a lifetime building something they destroyed overnight, you build it anyway. It was never, ever between you and them. It was between you and him anyway. Amen? Amen. 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 There you go. Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand.